Ladies and gentlemen, the history of all hitherto existing society is the history of making things just a bit less shit. Imagine a world where any person born into the human race is less likely to suffer than if they were born now. They're less likely to die of preventable diseases. They're less likely to be denied rights like education or freedom. They're less likely to be born into a war zone. They're likely born into a world that has a less unequal society. I believe, and this House should believe by the end of this debate, that that is the future that awaits us. Now, I know humans do bad things because we're stupid, and we're greedy, and we're selfish. And I know it's like super easy to point to those bad things. You've got like poverty and Ebola and war. Like there's a lot, right? There's like a lot. However, weirdly enough, things keep getting better, right? Every year, less people are living in poverty, less people are going hungry, less children are forced to go to work. And I think this is because looking at the ills of a particular point in human history, specifically the point in which we are currently living, doesn't show you the trajectory that we're on. War and famine, hardship and suffering, these things have always been a part of the human condition, but always to a decreasing extent. I mean, when the future spells technological advances like gene editing that could be used for evil, just like biological weapons or superbugs or whatever, you have to remember two things. Firstly, humans are kind of good at preventing our total ruination, right? Like, if you look at the fact that we could cause a nuclear apocalypse in the span of a day, but we've sort of avoided doing it until now, like, we seem to be doing okay at that. But moreover, you kind of have to look at the net benefits of the advancements that we're making, right? Obviously, some people are going to insist on abusing those advancements for the sake of evil, but the unstoppable tide of progress mostly brings us things like new scientific knowledge or less women dying in childbirth. Overall, things like eradicating guinea worm are probably good, you know? <laughs> You're going to hear a lot tonight about scary, apathetic, power-hungry governments. You're going to hear all of these bad things, but it is always under the pressure of those imminent dangers that radical change happens. It is when, I mean, like, listen, if you look at even just this continent 100 years ago, or, or 100 years before that, you had countries ripping themselves and each other apart and denying the humanity of just so many people. I mean, like, I alone can think of several reasons why I would not have lived to this age in literally any other century. But, it, I mean, it's because I'm gay. But, <laughs> specifically. But it's from the worst of our past that comes the marginally better of our future. And that's not because we think the future is going to be dark and scary. It's because we look back on our track record as humans and we say, why couldn't we succeed against literally all of the odds again, right? But OK, it's, it's time, guys. We're going to talk about the big boy in this debate, climate change. <laughs> so OK, I know we've crossed a lot of deadlines. And the consequences of the damage that we've already done probably will impact us into the future. But in terms of the bigger picture, the situation isn't totally irreversible yet. I mean, we have ideas, and not only ideas, but we have the means to prevent permanent damage. And when I say we, I don't just mean like everyone in this room not using plastic straws. I mean like companies and governments and scientists and NGOs. Some of these means and ideas are already working. Like the USA has less CO2 emissions every year than they did when Toy Story came out. And I mean, what a year. But also, <laughs> that wasn't a joke. <laughs> but also, like countries like Kenya and Zimbabwe are like e effectively enforcing single use plastic bans. And these seemingly unlikely things are happening because people believe that change is possible, that a better future is possible. And so they pursue the ideas that they have using the means that they have. And of course, it's really easy to feel hopeless in the face of this because there's no one clear and easy solution. But there wasn't and there isn't a global solution to things like ending slavery or secure, securing women's rights. But history shows us the way in which all of the moving parts come together to create one overall change. Even though no one moving part, no one activist or consumer or educator or legislator can ever foresee what that bigger historical picture is going to look like. However, each of those moving parts believes that a better future is possible, and so they do what they can. When many actors make one move in the right direction, it often tends to give them the information and the resources and the motivation to make another. 
You see this when governments are likely to get voted back in by eco-conscious populations when they do things like divesting from fossil fuels, or companies make more profits when they offer sustainable merchandise to conscious consumers, right? What you get in a society where that works, which is the one we're living in, is that we collectively end up taking many steps in the right direction. And maybe after all of those, perhaps 100 years from now, we get to look back on those steps as collectively being the way that we solved those problems. With every crisis that humanity has ever faced, we didn't know how we were going to solve it until we did. And I know things look pretty grim right now, but things also looked pretty grim when we didn't know how we were going to grow enough food to satisfy a population of billions of people. And then we did that. And we didn't know how we were going to make it to the end of the 20th century and into the 21st. And then we did that. And we don't know how we're going to stop sea levels rising and ice caps melting and polar bears dying. But hopefully someday, given the fact that we've done it every other time, we might just do that. Listen, I believe that the world can be a better place in 100 years. It's what we do. Hopefully, you guys believe that too. And maybe if you do believe that, you're going to do things with that belief. You might even do things like encourage others to believe it too. And in turn, they might do things with that belief. They'll do what they can. And you keep going like that until can be a better world becomes will be a better world. And at that point, what have we got left to lose? I mean, this house believes that the world is going to be better in 100 years because it absolutely can be. We've got every reason to believe that it can be. And if anyone stands up here tonight and tells you that because things look scary now, they're always going to look scary, it's just not true. So ladies and gentlemen, I can't prove to you definitively in this speech that the world will be a better place in 100 years. But by God, do I believe it. Thank you.